We are now going to take a closer look at the unfolding crisis surrounding GM's decision to shut one of its production lines here in South Korea. A number of experts have suggested that GM's move may be the start of a trend of big companies moving back to the U.S. to stay on the Trump administration's good side. It also has officials here asking what Seoul can do to prevent such a damaging situation happening again in the future. It's known as the birthplace of the compact Chevy Cruze and the Orlando SUV. GM arrived in Kunsan, a small seaside town on Korea's western coast, more than 20 years ago, bringing with it jobs and a fresh lease of life. But today, General Motors' Kunsan plant is at the brink of closure following the U.S. automaker's bombshell announcement that eye watering losses were forcing it to turn the lights off. Just how bad is it? In the last three years since 2014, GM Korea posted net losses of 1.8 billion U.S. dollars while only operating at 20 percent of capacity. Explaining its decision, GM pointed to mushrooming manufacturing costs linked to rising wages, aggressive labor union activity, and the depressed local sales. GM's decision to shut its loss-making unit here in Kunsan, which employs some 2,000 workers, could just be the first taste of what's to come. The president of GM International has already given an ominous deadline, saying that the company will make some important decisions on next steps by the end of this month. One of those steps, offering a $2.2 billion debt for equity swap in return for financial support from the Korean government. And close consultations between the government and the automaker are taking place, with officials from the finance ministry also scheduled for a session on Thursday with GM representatives. The emergence of the GM crisis comes at a crunch time for South Korea and the U.S., longtime allies both economically and diplomatically. Trade friction between the two is clear to see following the Trump administration's imposition of hefty safeguard duties on Korean products and Washington's desire to overhaul the South Korea-U.S. free trade agreement. This clearly reflects the Trump administration's policy of bringing jobs back to America. I think this case could influence the trade policies of the two countries and even be a model for other global firms doing business in Korea. The expert says Trump, who is targeting blue-collar workers in the midterms, may highlight the situation as an example of his efforts to bring jobs back to America. Jobs that he says have been lost over years of allowing American firms to up sticks to relocate overseas. Looking to avoid this kind of situation happening again, experts say South Korea must get serious about creating favorable business conditions for foreign firms. And these could include stripping back regulations and loosening the grip of the country's powerful trade unions. However, such moves would likely meet to resistance, and even if they're passed, such reforms are unlikely to bear fruit for a number of months. Too late to help the GM workers in Kunsan who wonder what their future holds.